So in 1994, General Motors bought up control of the nickel metal hydride patent rights. In 1996, General Motors released the EV1, but without the nickel metal hydride batteries, General Motors said that it was impossible to use them or didn't want to use them or declined to use them. They said there was a heating problem, and indeed there was. But instead of solving that problem, General Motors decided they couldn't use them. And in fact, as, as reported, they tend to suppress the fact that the batteries even existed. In the meanwhile, uh, Honda and Toyota released in 1997 a nickel metal hydride version of their cars, the Honda EV and the Toyota RAV4 EV. Those worked fine over 100 miles and never had any battery troubles, and the nickel metal hydride batteries worked uh, perfectly. General Motors then it was sort of contradicted by this, and so the California Resources Board had the leverage to require General Motors to make a nickel metal hydride version, as they had already originally stated, of the EV1. Uh, it wasn't until 1998 that supposedly these were all constructed and they only built 465 of them, but they let them sit on the tarmac until they, they quote, solved the uh, cooling problem. And finally, in December 1999 and January 2000, the Air Resources Board forced General Motors to actually release these cars, or some of them, the first 200 of them, and October 10th, 2000, General Motors sold control of the batteries to Texaco, which then, uh, six days later, on October 16th, announced that it was becoming a part of, of Chevron, Standard Oil. And, you know, these mergers aren't, aren't just devised in a minute. And six days ahead of time, they already knew the merger was going to occur. So why didn't General Motors just sell to Standard Oil? Well, apparently they wanted an intermediary, so there was an actual connection between Standard Oil and General Motors. So they General Motors sold to Texaco, which then became Chevron. The next year, the, after the merger was uh, consummated, uh, Chevron funded a lawsuit against Toyota, Panasonic, Sanyo et al., which ultimately uh, resulted in those uh, the existing production line for the EV95 batteries being shut down and the, uh, company, the RAV4 EV being uh, basically abandoned. No more batteries could be made. Whatever batteries existed at that time, that's all there are. On May 5th, 2004, a final settlement was, agreement was announced, which enabled uh, Toyota and certain other companies to use small versions of the nickel metal hydride batteries. Now, Toyota rightfully can be castigated for submitting to the uh, Chevron lawsuit. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, Chevron is very powerful, and the constituency for clean air and electric cars is very small. You know, the money is obviously on the side of the gas companies. Now, what did Chevron do with these p batteries, the patents uh, which they had acquired in, in, you know, so easily in 2000 and, and on October 10th and then October 16th? They basically haven't done anything. Their position is that if somebody approaches them, they'll sell the batteries or allow them to use the car, but they're claiming so far no one has approached them. Now, instead of approaching them and using these batteries, General Motors, back in 2003, when it killed the electric car for the first or the 10th or the 20th time, told the Air Resources Board that it had to search for fuel cells because battery cars weren't good enough, too expensive or something like that. And uh, now, in, in 2007, they're acknowledging that all that's not quite true, that they're really not going to be able to produce fuel cells as they said they were, so now, instead of going back to nickel metal hydride batteries, when the issue comes up again, General Motors, instead of producing the, the proven nickel metal hydride battery that's outside, that you've seen, is now saying they have to engage in a search for lithium. Now, what happens if lithium doesn't work? You know, what, well, will they just promote this uh, uh, fiction until after the all around for ev batteries finally die, maybe in 2015, and then they can say, well, you know, nickel metal hydride doesn't work and they won't have any exemplar to prove them wrong. Now, the solar panel you see behind me will never power a car unless it's a plug-in car. And that's what the Chevron patents are essentially doing. They're stopping that solar panel from replacing some of the gasoline in your driving. We have no assurance that anything else is going to enable those solar panels to, to produce some of the energy which is going to go into your car. Now the question is, will the people force Chevron to disgorge those patents? Will the people force General Motors to produce a plug-in car? But produce a plug-in car in you know, nickel metal hydride or lithium and guarantee it and sell it to the public. You know, obviously they can't do it with lithium, they can't do it with fuel cells, they'd have to do it with nickel metal hydride. 
So all we'd have to do is force them to do that, and that would pay for solar panels on your roof. So putting solar on your roof would be self-financing. The money that used to go to pay for your gasoline would then go to pay for your solar system. And the pollution that we used to create on the, with the gasoline burning would no longer be produced. At the same time that you're saving money, you would be taking money that used to go to the oil companies and instead paying for solarizing America.